As you know, climate change is one of the biggest threats facing the world today. And so talk about some of the recent political developments in climate change. I have with me a titan of the climate change defense movement, Dr. Michael Mann. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Now, you were famous, you were originally famous for producing a really important piece of science that's become known as the hockey stick graph back in 1998. Can you tell us briefly what that is? Yeah, well, we only have about a century of widespread thermometer measurements around the world, and we know the globe has warmed up uh, quite a bit over that century. Uh, but to understand how unusual that warming might be, we have to turn to other indirect measures of the climate that go farther back in time from natural archives like tree rings and corals and ice cores. And uh, what we did uh, literally two decades ago was to pull all those information together so that we could reconstruct how temperatures had varied over the past thousand years. And that uh, revealed a graph that's come to be known as the hockey stick, where the blade, if you will, of the hockey stick, the warming of the past century is seen to be unprecedented over the past thousand years. So 20 years ago, you were able to show the world in this, this clear graph that this warming that we're experiencing currently is absolutely unprecedented in history. Yeah. And that gave, made you have a lot of enemies. Can you tell me about some of the attacks that you've had to endure as a climate change scientist. Sure. So once the uh, hockey stick became this icon in the climate change debate, I was suddenly subject to all these efforts to discredit me personally as a way of discrediting this graph. And uh, I was subject to subpoenas, congressional subpoenas. I received um, what appeared to be a dangerous substance in the mail, a white powder that had to be examined by the FBI. I have had demands for me to be fired. I've had threats against my life, threats against my family. I've been hauled uh, before congressional committees put in the hot seat by politicians trying to discredit me, often politicians funded by the fossil fuel industry. So they've pretty much done everything, they've tried everything pretty much in the book to try to discredit me. Um, Just because you happen to be talking about a type of science that they don't agree with. Because the implications of our work are inconvenient for special interests who currently profit from fossil fuels. Um, climate change, the reality and threat of climate change tells us we have to move away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy. That is inconvenient for some powerful uh, special interests. Now I wanted to talk to you and I wanted to to record this conversation because there's a piece of news that hasn't become as public as I wish it had, um, is that a statement was recently made at the most recent uh, climate summit COP24 um, put out by four nations all agreeing on one piece of mistruth. We've termed them the axis of evil, but can you tell me about what, what was the statement and who made it? So um, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, about a month ago re released this new report uh, demonstrating um, just how damaging uh, warming of more than a degree and a half Celsius would be to the planet um, and painting a pretty bleak picture in terms of what we need to do. Basically, we only have about a decade to bring our carbon emissions uh, down dramatically if we're going to avoid warming the planet beyond that dangerous limit. Um, so at the uh, official uh, UN conference, uh, conference of the parties uh, called COP24, where all of the nations of the world come together um, to uh, build uh, sort of policies to deal um, with climate change under the auspices of the United Nations, um, all of the countries agreed to embrace this report um, as, you know, uh, basically as motivation for uh, a ratcheting up of our commitments to, to bring down carbon to emissions. To accept its findings. To accept its, to, to embrace its findings. Uh, and only four countries refused to do that. Four countries dispute the findings and, and the implications. Who were those four countries? They were the Trump administration, um, the U.S. as represented by Trump um, and, and his uh, administration, Russia, which has a huge stake in fossil fuels and has actually been working with uh, Trump uh, to try to develop um, uh, fossil fuel reserves in the Russia in Russia, um, cooperating with Exxon Mobil, um, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait, um, two fossil fuel countries. How does it feel as an American citizen to be amongst a group? with Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait? It's horrible. Um, you know, nobody wants to be the bad guy. And right now, um, at least as, uh, to the extent that uh, the Trump administration is the face of the United States, we're suddenly the bad guy. Um, fortunately, 
Uh, a lot of Americans are uncomfortable with that. And I think what we're going to see over the next few years is uh, really a rejection of, of that sort of stance and, and an embrace by you know, the United States of America, uh, embracing our role as a partner in global efforts to combat climate change. Now, when people want to do something about this, to fix this problem, stop being the bad guy, um, when I ask people what are you doing about climate change, sometimes they say things like recycling. Sometimes it's getting involved with political movements. Sometimes it's just being educated on the science. Yeah. But what do you think is the most important thing that someone watching this episode could do to support your work and to turn the situation around? Yeah, it's definitely voting. Voting for politicians who are willing to do something about this problem. Because when we don't come out and we don't vote in policymakers who will represent our interests, then too often what happens, we end up electing politicians who instead are serving the special interests, like the fossil fuel industry, doing their bidding rather than what's right for us. So making your voice heard um, in any way you can, and part of that is voting in elections. Well, we've only got two more years, hopefully, of this current president. So hopefully the next vote is going to be the one that changes things in the, in the long term. I'm thank optimistic, you. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mann, and thanks for watching TYT. Hi, everyone. I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ, and we know you don't want to miss an episode. So please click the subscribe button down below.